Welcome to the season four of this podcast, and now with a new name, the Chainbreaker Podcast, where faith meets mindset for a transformative journey towards living the full life God has designed for you. I'm your host, Fernanda Longo. I'm a seeker of truth and passionate about destroying belief systems that does not work in the first place. Together, we will peel back the layers of religion and understand the liberated wisdom of scripture that empowers us to transform our minds. And the verse that gives us this mission is Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So get ready to challenge norms, break free from toxic patterns, and rediscover the joy that is rightfully yours. Together, we will learn, discuss, and uncover the keys to unlocking the full life God intends for each of us. This is more than a podcast. It's a community. It's a sanctuary for those seeking a fresh perspective on faith and mindset. So buckle up for a journey of revelation, growth, and the pursuit of living your life in full alignment with God's extraordinary plan. Welcome to Chainbreaker Podcast, where truth transforms and lives are renewed. Let's begin this journey together. Hello, friends. Today, we are going to talk about perfectionism. And if you struggle with perfectionism, this message is short and sweet and it's going to be for you. Okay. Perfectionism is a lie that we believe in that take away all the joy that we have in our life in any circumstances. Okay. So if you are a person that you struggle with having things perfect, I want to encourage you to um, sit down with yourself for a minute and try to understand where that perfectionism come from. So for example, uh, when you were a child growing up, what was required in your home? What was the culture of the home? Because if you're a person that grew up on a home that excellence was always the top priority, chances are that you will struggle with perfectionism. And it's completely fine. I am glad uh, you grew up in a home that excellence was a important part of it. Um, I was raised based on excellence as well. And I did struggle with perfectionism most of my life up to about 10 years ago. When I had children and I went to a complete mental breakdown because I had three children in less than five years, it was crazy. I was also starting my entrepreneur journey and it was a hot mess and I had to learn the worst way how to break up with perfectionism and accept what I call the 95% rule. If things are 95% good, they're good enough and we need to move on. But I understand that it's not easy because I myself been through this process and also I am married to somebody who is a 120%. Unless things are 120% perfect, he's not moving on. (laughs) So I understand the journey and the hardships with having that perfectionism gene build up and I know how that impacts our lives in such a negative way. Okay, so I was talking to a friend the other day and we were working through her own uh, perfectionism issues and I start asking her some questions on where this perfectionism comes from and why she feels like she has to control everything. And I had this conversation with multiple people before um, and there's a theme that goes in when we are perfectionists. Usually we feel like somewhat we are flawed and we have to make things perfect because we somewhat, somehow we are imperfect. So the good news is that yes, we are imperfect. But the better news is that all of us human beings are imperfect. Every single one of us. So we are not alone 
when we just stand in the truth that yes, we are imperfect. But there is a best news, which is we have a God who is perfect and he came to earth to complete our imperfection. So here's the thing. Here's the beautiful gospel of grace, right? We are not perfect. We are imperfect. Yeah, we are humans. That's just how life is. But God is perfect and God fill in the blank for us and complete our imperfection. And that does not mean that God wants us to act perfect because God is not looking for actors. He is not looking for actors. He's looking for real people who are brave enough to do the things that he called us to do, right? So if he is not looking for actors and we are imperfect, how he fill in the gap? I'm glad you asked. He fill in with his grace of giving us the result that we want as if we acted perfectly even though we did not. So, for example, because I know that can, get, can be kind of confusing. For example, as a parent, I think parenting is the hardest thing in life, right? I have three kids and it's craziness. Every day is a new challenge. And as a parent, I know I'm not a perfect mother, And I know I will not be a perfect mother. And I don't care all the religions people that say, well, Jesus make me a perfect mother. No, he doesn't. I am not a perfect mother. And Jesus is, he is a miracle worker, but he's not like he's saying, do not get me involved in this business. <laughs> he is a miracle worker, but he's I, oh, how does Jesus work? How does God work? And um, if you're listening to this and you may be uh, not sure about your faith, <laughs> how does God work is that he does not change us to be somebody. He fill in the gap with our brokenness. So one picture that I like to think about is everybody knows the movie Aladdin, right? The movie is like a million years old. It was my favorite Disney movie growing up. I Yes, I am that old. <laughs> And what, uh, what is so interesting about Aladdin is that he ask the genie to make him a prince, right? So a genie would make you into a prince so you could stand in the castle. God is not a genie. So God does not want to change you into a prince or in the picture of perfectionism that we are talking. God does not want to make you perfect so you can step in the castle. God's going to take the broken street rat Aladdin and put him in the castle to show that God's glory and God's grace is bigger than anything we humans can do. So as a parent, even when I make mistakes and even when I am imperfect, which happen every day, God is still by his grace, give me the, the kids and the atmosphere and The, the environment to raise kids that are resilient, that are um, full of love and that are learning wisdom every day, not because I am a perfect mom, but because God's giving me the grace and filling in the gap where I am imperfect. So how that transfer to you as you go through anything that you feel like you're struggling with perfectionism. So that could be um, you want to exercise, you know you need to just get moving for your health. You know, we are all um, <laughs> on a certain age where our blood work is not showing up all clean anymore. We need to move, we need to eat better. And then we feel like unless we are doing the whole hour in the gym and are eating completely uh vegan, gluten-free, um, lactose-free, everything free. <laughs> we, are, we feel like unless we're doing perfect, we cannot uh, move forward. And that's the biggest lie. Because when we think that way, 
we tend, 99% of us tend to do nothing at all. So instead of doing nothing at all, it's better if you do a five minute walk. It's better if you eat one salad today. It's better if you start by eating an apple than not doing anything at all. You may never be the person, and I'm not just talking about you, I'm talking about myself. I may never be the person who works out four hours a day. Probably it's never going to (laughs) happen. I'm just going to say it, (laughs) at least for me. It may happen for you, but for me, it just, unless Jesus comes here right now and tell me that it needs done, it's probably not going to happen, right? So instead of me judging myself with the perfectionism and saying, if I'm not going to do the complete workout, I'm not going to do anything at all, most likely I'll do anything at all. So I'm going to choose to do a five or 10 minutes walk around the block and I'm going to move my body that way. I may never um, again, because I was a vegan before for years, but I may never become a vegan again. But maybe I can make a choice of today eating more fruits and vegetables and don't eat the bread. So small steps will make more progress than a perfectionism thought that never comes into reality. Okay, other example, in parenting, for example, we feel like we have to do all the right things. We have to feed our kids the right way, dress them in the right way. They cannot watch TV. They cannot be on uh, the internet. They need to have the better grades. They need, like we have the whole list. Parenting is an ongoing list. And if you don't know them, do not get in the Facebook mom groups because they will remind you of all of your failures, okay? <laughs> Being there, done that. So parenting, we have all this list. And if we think we have to do everything right or we suck as a parent, we are always going to feel like we are sucking as a parent. And if we just take one day at a time and say, today I'm going to make this healthy meal and I'm going to take my kids out to the park and we're just going to call it a day and say that's good enough, you are going to enjoy way more your kids, your life, your meal than if you have that whole perfectionism mindset that is never going to allow you to first do the thing right in the first place and second is going to rob you all the joy of your life okay we can do the same with relationships nobody's relationships are perfect forget about it nobody's relationships perfect and the question we have to ask is how can i take one step to to improve this relationship today small progress is gold okay a small progress is gold because big progress is not reality and the opposite of a small progress is no progress so unless you're making a small progress you're not making any progress let's talk about money one last example money if we think or i'm not going to invest anything until i have ten thousand dollars ready to invest then you're never going to invest because you have to start small maybe you start with 25 dollars or 50 dollars and learn that muscle slowly until you can get to a bigger sum of money and in the first place you are not going to even know how to invest ten thousand dollars if you didn't invest twenty five dollars right so we have this idea this mirage that perfectionism is this beautiful thing that we need to do but this is a lie this is a lie from the enemy and god proves that he does not want us to be perfect by his gospel of grace Because he knows that we are not perfect and he is perfect. We are not. He's God. We are not. And he will fill in the gaps and he will deliver us what we need and more because of his grace. Okay, so I hope this inspires you today to break up with perfectionism. Break it up. Become a 95%. So a 95% is what I am now. Um, after I broke up with 26 years of perfectionism in my life, that was 10 years ago, and I decided after having kids and starting my entrepreneur journey, I decided I would no longer destroy my immune system, my mental health, and all my relationships 
striving for perfectionism that does not exist and I decide to become a 95%. I decided that once things are 95% good, they're good enough and I'm going to move on. So give yourself the gift of breaking up with perfectionism and becoming a 95%, okay? I love you guys so much and I hope this was helpful today. If this is helpful, if you know anybody that is a perfectionist, send this to them. This is a very short episode and I hope this blessed you and I hope this will bless the people around you. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. If today's episode set your soul on fire, get ready for an ongoing explosion of inspiration in our email community. I'm dropping bombs of encouragement, unleashing Bible wisdom that liberates souls and empower you to live a beautiful life. This is not just an invitation, it's a culture revolution. Join us in the messy middle of faith and mindset. Head to thechainbreakerpodcast.com and just don't listen at Join the revolution at thechainbreakerpodcast.com and let's turn the page to the next chapter of your beautiful journey. And until next time, stay bold, stay unapologetic, and let's keep changing the game together.